What does unschooling look like for us? What even is unschooling? It's so cool to be unschooling. Haven't you heard? It's trending right now. I feel like with the influx of people that are homeschooling since COVID, unschooling is popping up. It's not that new. This is a great resource. I've read many unschooling books. Um, this one is great, Unschool to University. And there's some awesome definitions in there. Basically, instead of unschooling, I like to use the term child-directed learning. You're following the impulse of your learner. It's non-coercive learning by definition get this, there's a spectrum, according to this author, Judy. But this kind of helped clarify for me. Over here, you have radical unschoolers. So these are going to be parents that not only in the realm of academics and learning and curriculum are going on a very child um, directed approach, but also how the family system runs, where the child sees themselves fitting into the family. It's very child led. In the middle, which is where this author kind of identifies as being, and I kind of like that middle point too. It's where you take a child-led um, route for academics and learning, but when it comes to the family structure, when it comes to the everyday, day-to-day, -day, the parents, they got their hand on the wheel. And then over here, you're going to have people who follow a conventional homeschooling experience. So basically homeschool by definition is taking what's happening in the school system and bringing it home. So you follow a curriculum, there's testing, you might have some examinations in there in the older grades, but really you're in many ways replicating school in the home. But maybe there's a few subjects where you get flexible and do the unschooling. So maybe math, English, science, you're following a curriculum, but when it comes to the arts or social studies or gym, hey, let's unschool. Let's go with the interest of our kids. So I kind of see this as being in the middle and we're in the middle because there are a few areas as well where I've decided this is an anchor point for us. And even if my little schooler, unschooler, child directed learning kid says, I don't really want to do that. I'm going to say, I love you too bad. So for us, that's piano lessons. It's very important for me that my kids are musically literate. It, music is just so incredible. It's math in movement. It's dance. It's universal. Um, and we have them in piano lessons that they both asked to take. So, okay, child directed check mark. I sought out a teacher who was incredibly fun. It's games. It's playing. It's not like the piano lessons I had. So they both enjoy them. But for both of them, at a certain point, within a few, within a few months, they said, can we stop this now? No, no, you're going to continue. You're going to push through because I know for myself and my brothers and so many kids, if your parents let you quit something too young, sometimes you regret it. All right. Another thing for us where we're not purist unschoolers would be swimming lessons. I need my kids to know how to swim. We live right by the lake. So even though my one child doesn't like swimming lessons, I've been working with him to try to find a program that he enjoys. So being more, you know, gentle and attentive to his needs, not just forcing it, but realizing this is something, this is pretty essential. Okay, what else are we doing? Oh, we're part of a really cool program. Uh, once a week, my kids go to school. What? There is a school for unschoolers or homeschoolers. If you're part of this um, homeschool program, where my kids are allowed, you can put them outside, from kindergarten to grade 10. The kids go once a week, so there's the bells and the lineups, and there's a teacher that teaches them science, social studies, and gym. So they both didn't want to go at first, but I did want them to see the other side and at least have an idea of what school is. And it's only one day a week. So once we got a few weeks deep, they were both saying how ridiculous lineups are and how ridiculous all these rules are but it's fun. And now they ask to go every week. So as it stands, it is very child directed. They're enjoying it, but I had to help expose them and get their toes in the water. Funny. You want to hear something funny? You can follow a curriculum strictly and still be an unschooler. You can send your kid to school and still be an unschooler. At least according to this lady, the whole point is that the child is it's child directed and you're not like beating them. There's a few things. I'm going to course my kids. I don't care. Okay. Not really course them. So how are we unschoolers? Other than those few anchors in the week that I talked about, we're rocking and rolling. I really try to move with my kids' interests. 
I have, it, it's very important that we expose our kids to a lot of stuff. So all the literature I've read says, take your kids to museums, take them to different cities, take them to concerts, to pioneer villages, read all kinds of books with them, expose them to things that they can even see what they're interested in right? Unschooling isn't like put on a TV and video games. In fact, for us, there are no video games. My kids do not get individual screens and there's very, very selected, selective screen time, which is more of a treat than anything. And that's just us different families rock and roll differently. They operate differently. My kids are still really little. Uh, I think screens are a great tool. We're just not at that phase. Anyway, so I'm absolutely exposing them to literature. I met an unschooler this week who said her parents didn't make her read and she was illiterate till the age of 13. Now that would be very radical. Um, so for me, this is a book that we love and I've probably met a dozen other homeschoolers that love this resource. You can read a little bit of it, come back to it, leave it. Um, we also did Jolly Phonics and the kids loved it. What? One sec. In, a, in five minutes. Come here, mom, we're playing. Anyways, we did Jolly Phonics and the boys loved it. So they both have this little literary base, but I'm not pushing them to get to the next level. I'm okay with waiting. I'm okay with being patient. With mathematics, oh, I have a kid who loves arithmetic. This is irony, guys. He loves flashcards, my five-year-old, and he loves book work. So if I was gonna be truly attentive to this little kindergarten boy, what I'm already looking at doing for next year is probably following a math curriculum because he wants that. Now my six-year-old, my grade one, doesn't like math at all. He's not into it. So my job, I feel, is to find um, maybe a more artistic, like I love Waldorf. I, I talk a lot on this channel about Waldorf, to find the more artistic storytelling, musical elements of math. My six-year-old's very musical. So how, how can we still introduce things and flavors for each different learner? So yeah, lots of Lego lots of outside play, lots of creative play. They help me bake in the kitchen. We um, are involved in soccer classes for the one who loves soccer, swimming classes, and reading lots of reading of different books, um, audiobooks too. I don't always love reading to my kids, but you know, a little sprinkle of that Charlotte Mason expose them to beautiful things. So that's right now how we're unschooling. I also like the idea of world schooling. Have you guys heard of that? What do you think about that? If you go on a vacation or a road trip, is that not school? Are you not learning so much? So I'm very excited for next year and to see how the next level of homeschooling, unschooling, world schooling, learner-led schooling. Oh my gosh. I'm really excited for this trip. Wishing you all the best on your learning trip too, my friends.